Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Always tell people new level, new devil. You ask God to promote you and do something greater through you than what he's doing now. You don't expect the devil to roll out the red carpet and say, oh, goody for you, let me help you. You're going to get opposition. If you want to get along with people, you got to learn how to keep your opinions to yourself. Well, I think, well, I think, well, I think, well, I think, well, who asked you what you think? And even if I did ask you, I probably don't want to know, so. And yes, there's a scripture to back it up that says, mind your own business and stay busy with your own hands. Stop letting your emotions rule you. You can have emotions, but you dare not let them run your life. Be willing to keep quiet sometimes and say nothing in order to avoid strife. Believe it or not, you don't have to always have the last word. I I'm liking this little group right over here. For some reason, I'm just like... I mean, th this one little section here, you got it going on, I'll tell you. I I must have some folks over here that are like, yes, give me that. <laughs> Forgive quickly, don't be easily offended. Don't be easily offended. Yeah. Well, you hurt my feelings. Well, don't get your feelings hurt. <laughs> Why is it more my responsibility not to hurt your feelings than it is for you to make a decision to believe the best and not get hurt? Very good. I've never said that before. I like that. <laughs> Meditate on people's strengths and not their faults. <laughs> if you have to, get out a piece of paper and make lists. Treat other people the way you'd like to be treated. Give mercy. On and on and on. All right. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. Who is God? He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. Hallelujah. Wow. Okay, now, now, now let me just tell you that we miss so much in our life because we go to people to give it to us instead of to God. How many times in my life have I gotten mad at somebody? Maybe Dave, maybe somebody else, probably Dave. Because he didn't comfort me when I needed to be comforted. But you know what I had to learn? When I feel like I need to be encouraged, which I do sometimes, <laughs> instead of getting mad at Dave or one of my kids or one of my friends because they're not giving it to me, how many of you know when you're having a rough time, the first thing you do is start looking for somebody to blame it on? Go to God. When you need encouragement, go to God and say, God, I'm feeling kind of low today. I need some encouragement. And then let God pick who he wants to work through. God is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. And he is El Shaddai, the all abundant one who can nothing is too big for him. God cares about everything that you care about. God provides so many things. I tried to make a little list, but I would have still been writing if I would have kept going. The Bible says he's our shelter, he's our refuge, he's our hiding place. He's our keeper. He's the one who comforts us. He provides finances, he provides work, he provides strength, he provides grace, he provides healing, he provides wisdom, he provides relationships. The Lord is our provider. We're going to look at three scriptures, Philippians 4.19. Who is God? Pretty much everything. Where is he? Everywhere. When is he everywhere? All the time. What does he know? Everything. <laughs> and my God will liberally 
supply. Aren't you glad he's not El Cheapo? <laughs> My God will liberally, abundantly, I love the words that it uses to describe God's character, exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond. My God will liberally supply and fill to the full your every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. He'll meet our needs. Thank God every day for meeting your needs, even when you don't see them met yet. God is my source. He is my provider. Now, just to be fair, I need to tell you that I don't think you should just pull Philippians 4.19 out of the Bible and just quote it. You need to read the stuff around it. And Paul was actually talking to his financial partners in his ministry. And so the Bible does tell us that the way we release the blessings of God in our life is through being obedient in being a blessing to other people, in helping. <laughs> Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall God then bring a harvest in your life. If you have not yet learned to be a generous giver, I mean, a radical, generous giver who looks for opportunities to give, you are missing one of the best things in your life. One of the best things that you can do for yourself is be a generous giver. Always do more than what you have to do. And any time that you give to anyone, to any ministry, to any church, to any friend, to anybody in need, always see it as if you're giving it to God. God, I'm giving this to you. I want to help because I love you. You gave to me, and I want to give to you. And then you can get up and quote every day, and my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I think sometimes we get really good at just pulling a scripture out here and there that we like and ignoring all the stuff around it. Hebrews 13, 5, and 6 are just phenomenal scriptures in the Amplified Bible. Let your character or your moral disposition be free from the love of money, including greed, avarice, lust, and craving for earthly possessions. And be satisfied with your present circumstances and with what you have because God himself has said, I will not in any way fail you nor give you up nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not. Oh my gosh. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, forsake my hold on you, let you down, relax my hold on you, assuredly not, exclamation marks all over the place. What a comfort that should be to single parents. What a comfort that should be to someone who's lost a loved one and now you find that you need to take on responsibilities that you're not used to having. What a comfort to someone who's in a position that you feel is way, way, way over your head. What a comfort to someone who's been laid off from your job. God says, I will not fail to support you and take care of you. I will not, I will not, I will not relax my hold on you and let you down. My, 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 that is shouting ground. And then Matthew 6, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these things will be added unto you. One of the reasons why we don't have the things that we desire is because we seek the things instead of seeking God. If we seek God and the right way to live and the right way to be and do, for example, if, if I spend more time praying about how I can walk in love and treat other people right and just mention to God my needs, I'm more likely to get what I would really like to have because I've got my mind on the right thing, not the wrong thing. Jehovah Jireh is your provider. 
He's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. He provides healing. He's your strength. He's your wisdom. He's your peace. Who is God? He is amazing. Why would anybody not want to have a relationship with the kind of God that we're talking about tonight? Who in the world would not want to be taken care of? Who would not want to have comfort every time that you feel afflicted? He is the God of all hope. He is our salvation. My, my, my. Thank you. I just got a little more preaching I'm going to do. He's the one who provides grace, forgiveness, mercy. He's our hiding place, our shelter, our refuge in a storm. And he provides the strength that we need to do everything that we need to do. And then the last one is Jehovah Tsebaoth, and it's spelled T S E B A O T H, and it means the Lord of hosts. And you're going to like this one because what that literally means is that he is the head of the army of God. He's the captain, he's the general, he's the admiral. And when you're in a war, you're fighting a battle, and you've got God as your captain. Now understand this, there is no way that you're not going to win. Did you hear me? I said there is no way that you're not going to win. Matter of fact, we've already won. We're just walking it out in our life right now. Now, I think we need to see ourselves a little differently than what we do. Matter of fact, we need to see ourselves a lot differently than what we do. If he's the captain of the host, the head of the army, then there must be soldiers. <laughs> and although there are angels and things like that that fight and do battle for us, the Bible teaches us that we are the army of God. And I'll tell you the truth, if we could ever get together, mm -mm -mm, it would all be over and it wouldn't take very long. Because we are a mighty bunch, and no wonder the devil comes all the time trying to bring disagreement and disunity. I mean, it's hard to even get a whole worship team that can get along, <laughs> let alone a whole church, or to get denominations to start agreeing with each other. It's difficult for people to work together because people have not learned how to set aside their own little picky preferences and have unity and harmony for the sake of the gospel. We are an army, and we need to have each other's backs. Amen? I said we're an army, and we need to have each other's backs. <laughs> Ephesians 6, 11, and 12. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy-armed soldier, which God supplies, that you might be able successfully to stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. We have an enemy, the devil. I know nobody likes to talk about him, but he is alive and well on planet Earth. For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the despotisms, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural realm. So, maybe an unpleasant thought, but nevertheless one we need to think about once in a while. There are demonic forces that are against us. They hate God, and they hate anybody that is of God. And they will oppose us. Paul said, a wide door of opportunity opened unto him, and with it, many adversaries. I always tell people, new level, new devil. <laughs> you ask God to promote you and do something greater through you than what he's doing now, you don't expect the devil to roll out the red carpet and say, oh, goody for you, let me <laughs> help you. You're going to get opposition. So we're soldiers, we're in a war. Satan doesn't want you to be saved. 
And if you are saved, he doesn't want you to live like you're saved. He doesn't want you to have a close relationship with God. He'll do anything and everything to try to keep you from developing relationship with God. I'm very thankful for the crowd that's here tonight. It's awesome and amazing. But I can tell you, if everybody would have gotten here that planned to come, they would have been hanging outside. You know why? A lot of people didn't make it because they got opposition and they didn't know how to stand against it and work their way through it and do what was in their heart. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. No soldier, when he's in service, gets entangled <laughs> in the enterprises of civilian life. His aim is to satisfy and please the one who enlisted him. So, surprise, we're not here to get God to please us. We're here to please God. Every day, very early in the day, we should say to God, what can I do for you today? Not give God a list of things that he has to do for us to keep us even walking in the plan of salvation. Well, oh God, if you don't do this, and if you don't do this. No, God, I don't need anything but you. Yeah, there's things I'd like you to do. I can live without them, but I cannot live without you. Amen? What does it mean to be entangled in civilian life? It doesn't mean that you can't enjoy things in the world. We can enjoy things in the world. Some things we can't, but many things we can't. God created everything that we see. Everything that he created was for our enjoyment. But for example, what, what would it mean to get entangled in the world? Okay, let's just say that somebody has such a strong desire for things that they have now created a whole mountain of debt because they had to have things right now. They couldn't wait. And so now the only thing that they can do is have pressure on them all the time because of all the debt they have. That's called getting entangled. Hmm. Well, boy, am I encouraged about... Oh, my gosh. The devil has just done a number on people like, here, you got to have this right now. You can charge it up and no payments for a year or whatever. Learn how to have patience to wait on some things. And even if you are in a mess now, pray and ask God to help you get out of it. But don't expect him to just come along and supernaturally wipe out all your debt. Pay it off. Don't worry, I won't stay here long. I can tell you're getting antsy. <laughs> well, how many of you know that a lot of debt puts pressure on you? And it actually can take you away from what you need to be doing in serving God. The more stuff you have to have on your mind, the harder it is to recognize when the enemy's working and to have the zeal that you need and the spiritual strength that you need to resist him and stand against him. Something that God has been teaching me, and I love this, he said, put in my heart, Joyce, the more relaxed you are, the more easily you're led by my spirit. The more relaxed we are. So when I get like worried about this, thinking about this, trying to figure out this. How many of you know what it's like when all those muscles tighten up in the back of your neck and down your back and you're just like, what am I going to do? <laughs> so we need to eliminate as much pressure from our lives as we possibly can. And as God gets us out of messes, let's don't go just make more messes where we've got to constantly beg God for a miracle to get us out of trouble. Let's be in the world, but not of it. Let's not get entangled. And I'll tell you something else that we can avoid being entangled in, and that's other people's problems.
Well, aren't we supposed to help people? Yes. But if you've been trying to help somebody four years and they're still not helped, <laughs> and they're calling you three times every day, dragging you down, that's entanglement. Help people, pray for people. But don't get all entangled in their messes. Sometimes we know too much about what's going on in other people's lives and it turns out not to be good. 1 Timothy 6.12, Paul told Timothy that he was going to have to fight the good fight of faith. So soldiers fight in a war. The devil doesn't want us to believe in God. He doesn't want us to ever do the right thing. You know, there's a war going on all the time just between your spirit and your flesh. Constantly. The Bible says constantly. I wish it didn't say constantly. I wish it said on Friday afternoons. <laughs> but there it is. There's a constant battle between spirit and flesh. You know why? We're dead to sin in our newly born again man. We don't want to sin, but sin is not dead. I don't want to sin, but sin is still after me. And the Bible says that our flesh is the instrument that the devil works through. What is your flesh? It's your body and whatever part of your soul has not yet been given over to God. God lives in our spirit and he's always urging us to do what's right. Satan lives out in the world and he comes against us this way, urging us to do what's wrong. You have a wrong thought drop in your head, Jesus rises up, makes you realize you got a wrong thought, now you got a choice to make. I'm gonna cast that thought down and think something good. Somebody makes you mad, they hurt your feelings. Right away, the first thing you feel is hurt. Here comes the thoughts and all the feelings, and God rises up and says, forgive quickly before it takes root in you. Well, we have the Holy Spirit living in us to teach us all the time to bring things to our remembrance. I'm so grateful that when I need to remember what God has taught me, that the Holy Spirit brings it to my remembrance. So let's look at Galatians 5.17. I think it'll be good to see it. For the desires of the flesh are opposed to the Holy Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are opposed to the flesh, which is godless human nature, for they are antagonistic <laughs> to each other, continually withstanding and in conflict with each other so that you're not free, but you're prevented from doing the things that you desire to do. So it's not saying that you can't do the right thing, but it means that you won't just automatically do the right thing and it be real easy all the time. We get better at some things than others. I mean, there's a lot of things that I'm like really aren't that much of a problem for me anymore that used to be a problem, but I don't know if you're like me, you realize there's always something new coming up. And then sometimes there's those things that you think you've totally conquered and you haven't had a problem with for a long time and all of a sudden it comes back to life and you're like, where'd that come from? I haven't had a problem with that for a long time. But I think walking with God is a lot of fun. It doesn't have to be a burden. We don't have to think, oh, this is so hard, you know, these battles all the time. I just personally have come to the point where I just make a game out of it. It's like a goal to defeat the devil every day. It's like, it's like a goal to keep the junk out of my mind and to try to get through one hour without complaining about something. I still need help in that area. How about you? It is amazing how blessed we are and what we can find to complain about. Why? Because we're in a war. But we're soldiers in the army of God. And if we fight the way God fights, we'll always win. God is on our side. Hey, come on, you gotta get this. The devil's fighting all by himself. But we've got God on our side. I love that. He can come against me one way, but the Bible says he'll flee before us seven ways. 
no weapon formed against me shall prosper, but every tongue that rises up against me in judgment, I will show to be in the wrong. You know, the Bible uses many different names in reference to God. Elohim, El Shaddai, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, many different things. And a lot of times we don't realize how important it is to study those because each one of those references to God talks to us and teaches us about another area of His redemption in our lives. And so when you study that, you will learn His promises and more about who He is. He's our peace, our provider, our righteousness. He'll fight our battles for us. There is incredible power for your life in knowing the names of God. I've just been wondering lately, what is it that makes a person want to leave the comfort and monotony of home to come someplace crazy like this and do a medical clinic? Well, let's ask the volunteer doctors and nurses who do it all the time. They look sad and get downhearted, and then they look at you, get make eye contact, and you smile, and they read that smile, and then they start smiling. And then the kids all run to you and they smile. When you really experience that, you just, you would, you're hooked. So what do you think? It can't hurt to at least check it out, right? All you need to do is go to our website, JoyceMeyer.org. All the information is there for you. And just think, your adventure may begin today. Wilt u meehelpen de wereld te veranderen? Word dan onze partner en doneer regelmatig. Wij sturen u graag kostenloos onze brochure toe. Vraag deze aan door te bellen naar 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meyer.nl partner.